So in the, um, I'm going to move on to the middle examples for you just because I want to look at these. Um, so let's go and take a look at y equals negative x minus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 3. Okay? So again, guys, notice if I want to find the x and the y-intercepts, the x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. So x-intercept, y equals 0. The cool thing about this is that that's the same thing for functions. It doesn't matter what function I am talking about, going back to the last chapter. The x-intercept is when is the x value is when y is equal to 0. So I basically just replace y with 0, and I can go ahead and solve. So I have negative times x minus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 3. And the cool thing about this is I just have 0. So if I want to find the x-intercept when a product is equal to 0, I can apply the zero product property, which basically says, states, you have the product times all these values, set them each equal to 0. Now, does it make sense for me to set negative 1 equal to 0? No. No, right? We want to set, make sure you have a variable with that. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to combine the negative 1 with this. So we'll see if it makes any difference or not. So I have a negative 1 times x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. Can we now solve each and every one of those equations? Yes. Yeah, right? It's not too bad. Now here, I divide by negative 1 on both sides. So I have x minus 1 equals 0. So you could say x is equal to 1. So these are all of the x-intercepts. There's a couple different ways. A couple different ways we can label these. We can label them just like this. We can also label them as coordinate points. And a lot of times, guys, does anybody know another name for the x-intercepts of functions sometimes, or at least the real x-intercepts? Yeah, a lot of times we call the real zeros. So a lot of times I am going to, at least for now, I am going to interchange that the x-intercept I'll also refer to as zeros. And zeros we can write as x equals, or a lot of times you'll see them written as set notation. Okay, so the zeros are, and again, I'll have the notes for the zeros. So again, to like reiterate, remembering the definition of the zeros. Um, but the zeros, or the real, the real x-intercepts and the zeros are really interchangeable. Now, the next thing we can do is look at the y-intercept um, is when x is equal to 0. So can I figure out where the graph crosses the y-axis? Sure, just plug 0 in for x. Oh, that's all we had to do, Mr. McLaughlin? Yes, that's all you had to do, was just plug in 0 for each variable and then solve for the other. So we have 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Remember that minus is like a negative 1, right? I'll just leave the minus up. 0 plus 2 is 2, negative 3. So let's do this. Negative times negative 1 is positive 1, times 2 is positive 2, times 3 is y equals negative 6. You could also write that as a coordinate point. So I have my x-intercepts, and I have my y-intercepts. Cool? Yes? No? No? You guys don't like that? Sure? Questions? <laughs>